The onset of rheumatoid arthritis actually is more typically insidious. And by that I mean the symptoms come on gradually over a course of weeks and oftentimes months. And so that makes the initial diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis a little bit more difficult. Rheumatoid arthritis involves activation of the immune system. And one of the jobs of the immune system really is to monitor the entire body, not just the joints, not just any one specific organ. So we have to be aware of the fact that when there's active rheumatoid arthritis, there can be involvement of organs other than the joints. For example, there can be irritation of blood vessels that lead to a condition called vasculitis. In rare cases, there can be inflammation of other parts of the body as well. Perhaps the outside of the ear or parts of the eye can be involved with the process of inflammation that's related to rheumatoid arthritis. So again, the critical point is while certainly it's usually the joints that cause the pain, the evaluation has to be a thorough evaluation that takes into account all aspects of a person's medical condition. For the clinical evaluation of someone who has rheumatoid arthritis, there are really two very important components. The first is a very detailed history because often in the history one can understand the nature of the process that's going on and indeed exactly what the manifestations are. Sometimes that's not always immediately apparent because one of the major symptoms is pain and there are lots of different reasons for persons having pain. A second part of the clinical evaluation is a physical examination. And that's an examination which is not limited just to the joints, but really is looking at the entire person. Because something that, something that we often forget is that rheumatoid arthritis is a systemic disease, not simply a disease of the joints. A third part of the examination, of course, is the laboratory evaluation, where there are certain diagnostic tests that are very helpful and tests which also help us monitor the progress of response to medications during the course of treatment. In the Division of Rheumatology, we view ourselves very much as a partner in care. And I, I would say that that partnership really involves two persons, uh, both of whom are very important. First and foremost, it's a partnership with the patient. Uh, because as the patient understands more about their condition and what they can do uh, to help them deal with the signs and symptoms as the medicines are taking hold, I think that's extremely important. But the second and equally important is the person's primary care physician. We view ourselves as partners with a primary care physician working together with them to manage not just the rheumatoid arthritis but indeed all the issues that impinge on the person and that might be um, a part of their medical care. Rheumatoid arthritis tends to run in families, but it's important for us to understand what some of the risk factors for rheumatoid arthritis might be. For example, an important risk factor that's under each of our control is smoking. Uh, persons who smoke are more likely to have rheumatoid arthritis and if someone with rheumatoid arthritis smokes, they're more likely to have a uh, serious disease. There is a tendency though for rheumatoid arthritis to run in families and often the family history is a key uh, signal for the diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis. About 20 years ago, um, when a person had rheumatoid arthritis, there wasn't much that was able to be done therapeutically. And it was really a, um, a strategy of helping to manage pain and to um, minimize joint damage through splints and various assistive devices. Now we have therapies that are available to us that are able to prevent joint damage. So the advantage of early diagnosis is the ability to get in early, before joint damage has occurred, and use medications that are going to prevent joint damage from happening in the first place. 
This really represents a major change in, in our capacity to deal with persons who have rheumatoid arthritis and to help them maintain a fully active life throughout uh, the entire course of their condition. There have been two major breakthroughs in the last 15 years. The first was the recognition that a drug called methotrexate, when used in appropriate doses over time, has the capacity to markedly diminish inflammation, to diminish pain, and to prevent joint damage. The second, um, and perhaps even more notable, was the advent of biologic agents. These are new treatments which are based on a fundamental understanding of the process of inflammation and using biotechnology to devise new therapeutics. These began to come into more general use uh, about 12 years ago. And over the last 10 years, there's been remarkable advance in the number of different biologics that are available to us to use for patients who have rheumatoid arthritis. My name is Corey Ray, and I'm the UAB Highlands Clinic Manager. We are lucky in Birmingham that we have three pediatric rheumatologists and they are at Children's Hospital. They see children from as early as their symptoms begin up until the age of 18 and then they are transferred over to the UAB Rheumatology Department and we see them for the longevity from there. The adult patients are seen at the UAB Rheumatology Department. Uh, we have two locations. One is at Kirkland Clinic, the other one is at UAB Highlands Rheumatology. Um, it is a very strong department. We have 12 physicians and a nurse practitioner. And uh, for the last 18 years, actually, we have ranked between the top five and eight in U.S. News and World Report.